Dan Holzer. This is Brandon Rich. Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Cinema. Today we're going to be talking about Jonah Hill. Woo! Jonah Hill. I'm just ready to shoot this. Welcome to the show. <laughs> oh. Today we're drinking Flaming Dr. Peppers in honor of Jonah Hill somehow. In no way. It's in honor of me, really. In honor of Brandon. I love him. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about Jonah Hill, some crazy things that happened in uh, the entertainment and... Uh, like the fights just happened. I don't know if you want to cover the fights. We could be going straight eagle, attacking the crowd. <laughs> uh, I wasn't able to watch it, but dude, he stomp kicked a random civilian. I did see highlights of it. <laughs> dude, like this reminds me so much of Justice, an actual eagle like snatching a salmon out of the lake. Yeah, I had bets on McGregor. That's right. With oh, you. That's right. Yeah, another <laughs> so, bet you lost. You know, just another lucky one you won, really. Oh, yeah, that's just that's me. Uh, today we're gonna talk about Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill, super famous for uh, all, a lot of these comedic roles. He's kind of branching out now, getting out there with more um, yeah. more serious actors, taking on different roles. Yeah. Started in when really his big role was super bad. Yeah, killed him. Skyrocketed him. Now he's Oscar nominated Jonah Hill. That's right. <laughs> would you say, like, for example, would you say he started from the bottom now, yeah? Uh, yeah. I think I would agree now, upon yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> now he is here. Now he, yeah. Did you do like the wise person? Now he is here. He is. He has happened to be here now. I brought scones. Scones. It's like the white neighbor that. That's the whitest thing you can think of. I brought a tub of mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. I know you do. You're sick. Uh, Jonah Hill. He, yeah, Super Bad was where he got his his big break, but that wasn't his first movie he was in. That wasn't. Uh, Forty Year Old Virgin. Forty Year Old Virgin. Was that his first? I don't know if that was his first. But I that think was, it. His big shining moment for five <laughs> minutes he was in it, buying goldfish boots. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird premise. Someone opens up an eBay store where you walk in and can see the products but can't purchase them. That's a stupid premise. But for the movie, I, it's perfect. Well, I was going to say, like, I think that's what makes a lot of the comedies that he's in good is they're believable. Like, a lot of the... you can, I could totally understand a lot of that stuff that would go on. If the eBay store is the weirdest thing... Well, the eBay store is completely... Just fucked. What? Like, what? How does that make come to my store? Sure. Where you can't buy anything. Yeah. But you can go online and buy it. We will not sell it to you. That's right. That's stupid. <laughs> they're like, get off. They're like, go on the internet. But I want these goldfish boots right now. I'm just, look, I'm just trying to buy some boots. I don't do that here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm here. Yeah. Can I just give you money and then I can just walk out with these no. boots? No. I know. These boots here, if you want, you're going to have to order them and I'll ship them to you. He has said, he's come out and said that is probably one of his favorite scenes he's ever shot still. Really? Yeah. The goldfish boots? The goldfish boots. That's so funny. <laughs> he's got a great sense of humor. Uh, uh, his, uh, I was going to talk about how he started. He his he comes from uh, famous relatives. His his dad is worth the accounting for the Rolling Stone tour. And his mom was a costume designer, so they're all already in entertainment. So he started getting into stuff when uh, he started being a writer, and he's really funny. So he started working at like a bar, kind of like an open mic, but he would read skits he did and do stuff like that. Uh, started getting a big following, pretty big following for himself. And Dustin Hoffman's kids were one of his biggest fans. He had no idea, he was just <laughs> hanging out with them. And then they introduced <laughs> his dad, and his dad kind of helped him get an audition for a part, and it kind of just started steamrolling him. That's right. He was, uh, I don't remember the name of the movie. Which, which one? The one he got the part in. Um, I don't know. Yeah, me either. I was going to say, it's one of, one, one of his earlier ones. Judd Apatow loves comedians. He grew up in the same thing, doing a radio show with his dad that had a bunch of comedians on there. So if you could make Judd Apatow laugh, you'd probably have a good shot of... Yeah, I mean, he did funny people, which made nobody laugh. Ah, oh, <laughs> funny people. Ah. <laughs> uh. What a weird title for that. Because it's not funny at all. Well, I still so I understand the premise, right? I get it, yeah. A lot of funny people have dark, dark pasts, and they're, you know, they're sad people. But, man, come on. You still it's, have to make a... It's Adam Sandler, Seth Rogen. You give me that garbage. Mm-hmm. That's... I, I did not like that movie. A comedian that... I remember uh, one of my favorite parts in that is they're, like, walking through his house, and it's clearly making fun of Adam Sandler's movies. <laughs> right? Like, you know, he had all these, like, 50 first dates, all these things are like, all right, you're going to, this is your movie. Ready? A new idea for you. You're going to fall in love with a girl. Something's going to be wrong with her. Or something's going to be wrong with you. 
and then you're going to have to figure out a way to overcome that really weird idea and figure it out. So in one of the scenes is he's walked past it and there's a poster and it's called Redo It and it's his head on a baby's body. <laughs> and, uh, I don't remember that. And the guy walks by, I think it's Jonah Hill, and he's like starstruck by Adam Sandler and he's like, I love that movie, you know, because like you had to be a baby again to learn to be a man. <laughs> and that's was like... He's reading too much into the movie? Well, he's just trying to impress him with like... Like Adam like, Sandler's just bullshit movies <laughs> like just to do movies like, well you did it so you can really find your true inner self yeah you like you had to learn how to be a better person by not being a person again it's like <laughs> I just did it for 300 million dollars right he just does it for the money now which is fine I would I was gonna say I mean so I actually think that Adam Sandler has the dream job you work oh, with your friends yeah. your whole life making movies Takes and beautiful women in his movies and then he just he does that and they're like hey your movie wasn't very good he's like I don't yeah but I was in Hawaii why did it <laughs> yeah I was in free. Africa <laughs> right? I was doing wherever I wanted to did you ride that elephant that was real yeah I wrote that in the scene <laughs> right he's like you know who I think should make out with me in this scene whatever's the hottest woman in Hollywood just get Jennifer Anderson here we'll have a fight with someone hotter yeah over me I have a fight with uh, Tom Brady's wife or someone crazy ooh Giselle huh Going Giselle, supermodel. I don't know if she can Super. act. Super. That's funny. But, um, uh, I was going to talk about it before I forget about it. What started, like, kind of kickstarting his life. Alright. Okay. So, uh, if you guys don't know, Jonah Hill, uh, has a huge scar. I think on his left arm. It's huge, bubbly and stuff, and it's, it's serious. So, when he was 15, he found out his mom had cancer. And he winked. He just couldn't handle it. Started like smoking weed, partying all the time, and hanging out with his buddies. Explains really... why he met Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, made a career out of it. No, but they were really like super reckless. And one night, his buddy and him were in the car. They're having fun, joy riding, and the guy rolled the car. His arm was out. And they just dragged it, and it just Ooh. made a huge scar on his arm. And he said the only thing I remember about that night after that was waking up in a hospital bed, and he heard doctors talking about whether they should amputate his arm off or not. And uh, he's just sitting there like, you know, I, I, I think that everybody, my grandpa used to say that everybody's religious when they're in foxholes. Like, you'll always find atheists religious in foxholes. Mm -hmm. If I was in a bed and they're like, yeah, you know what? It's probably better if we just take the arm. I'd be like, oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lord, here we go. All right. <laughs> Let's start these deals I probably won't live up to. I'm really sorry, but. <laughs> I tried to do that in fantasy two weeks in a row now. It never worked. No. Praying the wrong God. I'm saying Odin. <laughs> Odin strong. Uh, see, I was saying Kratos. I play a lot of God of War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so that's when he kind of like started his life up. And it, he said, too, when he woke up, his mom and his dad were there, and they were just so like disappointed in him. You know, like, can you imagine your mom has cancer, and she looks at you and goes, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, <laughs> oh, gosh. It's pretty sad. You don't want to upset your mom, especially if there's cancer. You don't know if she's going to make she it much longer. She has a little longer. bit on her plate. Yeah. She's a little busy. Yeah, like, I only have three weeks to live. And this is how you choose to spend it. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know if the word disappointment ever came out of her mouth, but oh. I'm sure it did. I, yeah. <laughs> That's the largest thing you can hear. I'm disappointed. She's like, listen, <gasps> I just don't know why you're acting this way, you know, because you have a year to live longer than I do. You'll be alive longer than me. I have three weeks. How long you got, huh, Jonah? Yeah, well, I should be joyriding. <laughs> I should be whatever in a car. I should be living my life on the edge, not you. But I don't. Yeah. But that's what kind of started him to take it more seriously. And then he moved to New York. And he started writing uh, comedy. And, and I think that he thought that he was more of a writer than an actor. Like, he, you know, everybody I think that writes wants to be an actor. But yeah. some people have, like... I'd prefer to write and not be in the camera, but that's me. You're in a camera. You I know. It's liar. weird for me. It is definitely a new thing for me. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you don't belong in a camera. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's, I think that's what he kind of like realized what he wanted to do. And then it snaps it into here. Well, it just, you know, once you figure out like, he just kind of took the, like the path of, you know what, if this works, great. If it doesn't work, fuck it, I'll try it forever. I don't care. Well, I mean, a lot of people do that. We're it's doing that with our podcast. Time. Well, it's succeeding. It keeps growing. I don't want to brag, but we have over eight followers. Hey, thanks, Tom, Jim, Betty, second Tom, third Tom, and I can't remember the rest. Is one of them Brady? 
No, he's busy. Uh, he's that would be great. We he's would be really what? busy losing. Ooh. <laughs> You're a Niners fan. You can't say much. I can't. We yeah. just lost to the Cardinals. Yeah, the... God, the Cardinals. Wow. All my Arizona friends are laughing at me. That's That's fuck you. That's Oh, we're you mad, You heard me? I'm guess... mad. How right. dare you beat us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go to uh, Jonah Hill. You want to do underrated? Let's do underrated or overrated. Uh, ooh. Uh, I'll let you go first. For underrated? Whichever one you want to start Okay, with. so this one I want to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to pick three movies. I'm just kidding, because I know I made you mad last time. I'm going to go an underrated movie. So I think that Jonah Hill is known for a lot of his great comedic roles. And I think this one kind of got washed under. It's actually one of my favorite ones. It's like a movie that if I see on TV, like my day's kind of changed. I'm going to watch this movie probably for the next 40 minutes. That's... And it's Get Him to the Greek. I really like that movie. Him and Russell Brand are so funny. Uh oh! Oh no! Oh no! So my overrated movie. <laughs> oh no! Really? Let's get him with the creep. Get out! Are you serious? I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I actually really like that movie, and the reason why I think that it works so well is there's not not very many parts that are like over the top. Like, there's, like, can you imagine a rock star telling you, hey, you have to smuggle these drugs to get through this thing? You're like, yeah, that seems possible. I absolutely could. I've been there. <laughs> Smuggling, I'm not a rock star. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> he said he was a rock star. And shut a gun to my head. Uh, my overrated movie? Or, I guess underrated. No, I'll go overrated. You want to go overrated? I'm going to start with overrated. That's fine. Megamind? Megamind? Megamind. Will Ferrell? Will Ferrell, Brad Pitt, Johnny Hill, Hill, Tina Fey. Tina Fey. I didn't like it. Didn't care for it? Didn't care for it. Didn't like the super villain becoming the hero? I like the premise. Didn't make me laugh. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I like the characters. On paper. Just wasn't feeling it? Just wasn't feeling it. I watch a lot of animated movies. Okay. They're really just movies. That's why I'm doing this. I, I like... I, I'm going to disagree with you. Yeah, because you're not smart. So, yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'll say I'm gonna disagree with you only because I love the idea of this villain. I love the idea of a villain that wins. Like a villain never thinks he's gonna win. So when a villain wins, like what do you want to do now? He's just like, I'm so fucking bored. I miss Batman or whatever it is. No, I really like the idea. It just wasn't nice. It just didn't land for me. I just okay. It's Will Ferrell, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill gets the power. She's a monster. This is kind of just like, this isn't that funny. Okay. I like the piranha fish head guy. Yeah, his he even made gorilla. it gorilla. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this <laughs> yeah. Like there was, I laughed very few times, but I know overall, it's like it got a lot of hype. People liked it. I was like, that's just not for me. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I was gonna say uh, for my overrated movie is gonna be Moneyball. Okay. Have you seen it? I well, I've seen. No, I haven't seen it. No, I saw. I was gonna say I've seen half of it, and then I didn't watch the rest of it. All right. But which isn't fair. I shouldn't say that about movies. But I don't know. Like, if you try to be three things, like you want to be a baseball movie, or you want to be like an accounting movie or a drama movie, you better. An succeed. accounting movie? Yeah, that's like what that guy does when he gets out of college. I get the, that's a genre now. Accounting. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I need a new movie. Let's go to the accounting section, dear. Watch this. Here's the segue. Accounting right. movies. Wolf on Wall Street's like accounting. And that was my overrated. Oh, well, you hate Wolf on Wall Street. I don't hate it. This just was my overrated for Leo. God, see, that's like one of my. Favorite I thought about doing it for Jonah Hill. But I was like, overrated. This is too easy. I already did it once. I'm not gonna do it again. I love. He played uh, Donnie in it with his big fake teeth. Yeah. And everything, and I love that movie. I know you did. You thought that American Gangster. No, American came Hustle. Out, uh, American Hustle came out the same time you thought that was your underrated, which I disagree. Absolutely. I, I hate that that movie was drowned out. Martin Scorsese. I was going to say, you had Martin Scorsese. Everybody expected it to be great. Dude, John Barenthal has a, a bit part that's really good. Yes, I do like him. Dude, Punisher. Wait, how about Chain. him? Jonah Hill. Do you remember that scene where they're in the road and he's trying to hand him the briefcase of money? He's like, hey, why don't you come over here and just take it from me? Just take it. He's all, don't fuck around, man. Just just hand it to me. He goes like, you know, I'm pretty busy. I can't just, I can't walk away. He's all, I don't want to play with you, man. Just, I gotta go. He's like, I don't know why it's with the attitude. And I love that that happened. And then he gets arrested because he has a briefcase because he drives off because he's fucking around. Yeah. Like, a lot of parts in that, I thought for Jonah Hill anyways, were, like, he was a completely That's different fair. person. I mean, he got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. 
Yeah. For that movie. So apparently I'm just against critics as well. That it's me. Like, just battling. Fuck they know it is. That is true. Well, but he also got nominated for Moneyball. Yeah, and I, and like I said, I shouldn't judge it too harshly because I haven't seen the whole thing. I don't think you should judge something if you haven't experienced the whole thing. I hate when people watch like 15 minutes of a show and they're like, I hate this. And I'm like, you can't say that. Like, like, just like just like a steak dinner. You're like, this well, steak sucks. You'd be like, why would you, you start with <laughs> the veggies if you got steak in front of you? I'll just knock them off the plate. Yeah, that's what I do. Who would you like? But I would like an extra side of steak. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I was cooking steak last night. I was like, I'll make the sides. I was like, good, because if I made the sides, it would be a steak and a pork chop. Right? I was like, I want ribs on the side. But we're going to have a pork chop and steaks. You heard me. <laughs> Dude, don't three make sides. dishes. No. Jordan, my wife gets mad at me all the time. Mm-hmm. Where's your sides, friend? I was like, well, I made this extra big, so I don't. <laughs> yeah. I will be full off of this. I made two steaks. 40 ounce steak. I put it in a sandwich. <laughs> right? I rolled it in a burrito. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> my sides is, my sides is whatever's not the steak that's there. But don't make nothing. I don't want... Like, if we do mashed potatoes, I'll make a huge tub and I'll just eat mashed potatoes, I guess. <laughs> oh, I love mashed potatoes. Uh, but I really liked Moneyball. I did. Okay. I really enjoyed it. But I also, I'm a little bit of an A's fan. I liked what they did then. So, kind of hit with me. Um, my underrated movie. Did I say underrated already? You have not. You did overrated. You said Megan Mind. Ooh, I did. Uh, my underrated movie, The Sitter. The Sitter? It's not a great movie. It's not okay. Jonah Hill's best, sure. but it got trashed. Oh, trashed. okay. I think it's better than what everybody thinks it is. It's his first, like, I think, big. It's his movie. Yeah. There's not any, There's kids in it. Like, that's who's in it. Yeah. I don't know if I can name one other person in so it. So he's just carrying the movie by himself. Yeah, and he does a good job. as a little babysitter. He's yeah. got three kids just out of control. Yeah. And he wants to get laid. I mean, it's a, like most babysitters. I was say, it's it's pretty obvious I mean, thing, but you're like, what? How old is he? You're like, he plays like a man from the age of ten to forty. You're like, oh, he wants to have sex? Yeah, I followed this plot. <laughs> yeah, I I really like. Well, I didn't. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a good movie, and I thought this guy is gonna have a good career after this. Cause I thought he was really funny in it. Yeah, I thought he killed it in it. I mean, overall, it's not. Probably doesn't even grace his top five, but... No, but that's what I like about Underrated. Underrated yeah. is you... You send a movie, like... You're like, what's your favorite movie? You're like, still I'll watch Superbad. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch Superbad. Superbad still makes all me laugh time. when he's a kid and he's drawing all the dicks. And the, and the girl goes, what is that? And he just starts, starts eating them out of shame. I'm like, that. I will still laugh at Superbad my entire... I love How much do you want to talk about Superbad? God, I love when he's buying the alcohol. Like, he goes in there to buy it. And then he has all his little... Visions of what's gonna happen. Yeah, he like, <laughs> slits the security guard's throat and. Oh no no! The security guard slits his throat. That's what. That's right. That's so right. So he goes, "Don't do it, kid." He's like, "Never had a choice." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he catches it, and then he just like. <laughs> that's right. And then he uh, has the old lady buy his alcohol for yeah. him. He's like, "Good fuck, good, her. good luck fucking that girl. Have that fun fucking jewels. Yeah. I will <laughs> have fun in your." I really like that scene. That's the funniest thing. In your elder years. It's so funny. And I mean, are we about to bring up Superbad and not mention Michael Sarah? Okay. I'm just kidding. Mick Lovin? Mick Lovin. <laughs> Mick fan? Mick Lovin. God who rest is his soul. It? I don't know what he's doing now. Yeah, who is it? I assume he has his own, like. I mean, he killed it in Role Models. Too. The <sighs> Hell yeah, he's Dude, I love Role Models. Role Models. We'll talk about that some other day. Dude, I was going to say, don't models. get me started. Like, mm. that was like, when I watched the movie, that was my relationship with, like, my cousin Chase at the time <laughs> was. The guy's name was Danny. And I was well, like, Well, that's because you're a piece Dude, are they of filming us? They might be. Where he's like, Dude, I'm a Minotaur. <laughs> I was like, I love how the movie starts. Guess what I did last night? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, Super Bad. Everybody loves Super Bad. Super Bad doesn't like Super Bad. So Seth funny. Rogen is the cop. Bill Hader is the cop. Uh, Jason Franco is in it for like a hot second where he's. Jason Franco? His son. Or his son's son, his brother. What's his name? James. And then. Was his son's or er, brother's Shit, name? It's not Jason. Mm, I really like him too. Me too. Dave. 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 <laughs> he's in the soccer scene. You remember? They're running. I through, do. And he says, uh, "He's like, what are you doing? We gotta keep running." And he goes like, "Why don't you go piss your pants again?" <laughs> and he's like, "That happened four years ago, asshole. The people don't forget." Anyways. <laughs> and I remember 
remember seeing that later. I was like, oh my god, it's that fucking guy right here. James Franco's good. I like James worked with Damon Dave. or Dave Franco. Both of them have worked with Jonah Hill. Yeah. Uh, but Dave Franco was really good, funny. I liked him in Twenty One and Twenty Two Jump Street. Oh god. Another Jonah Hill movie. Yeah. The tie-in. The segue. Let me go. <laughs> well, hey, let's talk about how many times they remake a movie, and it sucks. It's so bad. Dude, I, I mean, like, Justin, I mean, it's funny, because if it's bad to you, you don't really remember, Baywatch? I did not. I couldn't. I just couldn't watch Like, it. they try so hard to make these movies, and they're just so bad. 21 Jump Street, and I would even say 22 Jump Street, might even be better than the first one. God, they're so funny. They're so good. And they make fun of themselves, the whole movie, too. Like, the end right. of the scene, or end of the movie, in the first one... They just start spitting off little movie posters and shit. Yeah. Like, nursing school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, we realize this is ridiculous. Yeah. But we're going to have another one. How about when they're undercover is, like, the Mexican gang? <laughs> That's like, right. What's up, man? How you doing? Is my man right here. Do you, like, points to him? My name is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> He's half hippie, Holmes. <laughs> I Love do. It. I like it. Uh, but, uh, Jonah Hill wasn't convinced that the movie would do good in the box office. For uh, the sequel? No, for the original. He was oh, not really? convinced. So him and Channing Tatum made a bet. And I don't I don't know if Jonah Hill followed up on the bet. But the bet was if the movie makes thirty five million dollars or more, Jonah Hill has to kiss the tip that's right. <laughs> of of his Channing dick? Tatum's dick. Of his dick? Yeah. So I, I don't know if he's paid up on it or not, but the movie made thirty six million. Thirty <laughs> six? Thirty six. It did over thirty five. Dude, that would be the best thing to have over someone's head. When you're like, hey man, can you buy me this burrito real quick? He's like, I don't know if I should buy it. Like, you want to do something else then? <laughs> I think the movie got 36 million. No, no, I'll buy it. It's cool. Got 36 million. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so right here in the store. Oh, uh, man, I gotta know what he did. But that, you know what? Yeah. It's almost more currency to just have that over someone's head forever. Forever. That is true. Because I know uh, Channing Tatum has a great sense of humor when he was on This is the End. Another okay. great Jonah Hill movie. Great movie. If you guys haven't seen This is the End. I thought about making that my underrated movie. It's not a bad one. It's, it's not so good. It's really good. So, uh, This is the End, if you guys haven't seen it, is a movie about uh, uh, all the actors that play themselves. James Franco, Craig Robinson, They Danny really Pride. were just like, hey, let's film a party and then just make up a movie oh, after man. we're done It partying. was like what we're saying, like Adam <laughs> Sandler, everyone's was like, he's yep. washed up, not good. And I'm like, yeah, but he's also 50, filming movies with his buddies. Yeah. Seth on Rogen vacation. did that because he probably did funny people and learned from Adam Sandler. He's like, I'm going to just make a movie with my buddies. We're not even going to change our names. We're going to be Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, and Emma Watson. That's right. Oh, Emma Watson. <laughs> Emma Watson. Uh, this is the end when they, uh, so they all play themselves. They all play like, James Franco plays James Franco, the actor. And yeah. Seth Rogen plays. And they go to this huge party and then the, I don't know what it's called. Like, it's like the apocalypse. The reaping or whatever. Yeah. And they take all the good people, leave all the bad people there. Like the apocalypse. Uh-huh. And they're all there, and they're all hanging out for a great time, and, like, Danny McBride shows up, and in the movie, like, Danny McBride is the biggest dickhole that you've ever seen. <laughs> he really is. He's, like, the worst, and, like, Jonah Hill is... He's, like, like, the sweetest guy. He's, like, yeah, and they're, like, nobody's that sweet. Right, he's trying so hard to be friends with everybody. Like, like yeah, it's so like, hey, funny. hey, come here. Come, come lay with us. Like, you're cool. Look, come on. You know, DMX didn't stop, drop, and open up shop alone, you know? I'm not going over there. I don't want to... <laughs> I want to spoon you. Right, Christopher Mintz Ploss. He's in it. Uh, Michael Sarah is uh, like as the biggest yeah. like gangster Perf. dude. Like Rihanna's in it. You want some juice box? You want some juice box? He's like having sex with two girls at once. Uh, I got some juice box. I like him. He's disappeared. No, that was a that's in the name. <laughs> and Craig Robinson was like really for me. I thought. I mean, he did really good. You know, you want to do Pineapple Express? He was fantastic. Pineapple Express, <laughs> but this for me, I was like, okay, so he's really funny. He was really funny in both those movies. Yeah, really good. And I'm a big Office fan. One of my favorite TV shows. He's a really good match. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a, a favorite of mine. Is uh, this is the end? That was a really funny one. I love the dialogue in it is so funny. And I don't know how true they make this stuff, but like, ah, well, if so then James Franco's the biggest douche. I think they just ad lib a lot. Like, yeah. Hey, well, what if I pretended to be like this? I'm sure there's a story of the they just written down a piece of paper. Here's the movie. Um, Oh, it just says, do you. <laughs> yeah. On everybody here. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I love it. Let's do it. Can you imagine someone be like, hey, I want you to play yourself in this movie. And Jonah Hill's there. He's like, that's not so much 
fun. They tell you Zealous is in it. Sounds great. Like, also, there's a scene where you get fucked by a demon. <laughs> and he's like, all right, sign my name already. Right? <laughs> I'm so down. Uh, I was surprised when I saw Channing Tatum jump out in full leather with a gag. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I was utterly surprised. I wasn't expecting that. That threw yeah. me off. So, there's that. If you guys haven't seen that, Danny McBride has, like, he goes crazy all, like, straight apocalypto, mad world. He's embracing it. He's doing what I think everybody's doing. <laughs> He's like, I would. Oh, the world's an apocalypse? I'm gonna run this bitch. I got Channing Tatum as my bitch now. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, while they were filming that, Danny McBride didn't know that we get to play, like, the Gimp or whatever he was gonna be. And, uh, Channing Tatum, who is super, like, down for a joke, Jonah Hill yeah. told him, he goes, go fuck with Danny. He goes, what do you do? He's like, manhandle him. Because that's what Chain Tatum would do to Jonah Hill all the time. Like, like Chain Tatum, he, he, you can watch this on YouTube. He does this thing where he like grabs inside of your leg and he just squeezes your thigh. And it, it's like a dead leg for your leg. He goes, ow! He did it to him when they were being interviewed on Conan O'Brien. And he's like, I fucking hate it! And I just started laughing. So he's like, go fuck with Danny. He's like, alright. So Danny's like just chilling off by himself in this room. And Chain Tatum bursts through this door. He has the get mask on and the shit. Danny Brown's like, what the f- And then before he can say anything, Chang Tatum's a huge fucking muscular so guy. Huge. Tackles him, takes him down to the ground, starts holding there. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Biting him, and he just cannot stop laughing. And then he takes off the mask. He's like, Tatum, what are you doing? I'm sure he bragged about that. Well, Tatum was on me. He wrestled me down to the ground. What would have happened to you, Susan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really, if you ever has to defend it. He's like, yeah. you seen him? He's amazing. I'm not mad at him. Yeah. I would let him handle me. Oh. <laughs> Easy. I mean, no, I love you. We've baby. all seen Magic Mike. That is true. I've seen 30 it multiple times. times. <laughs> 30, huh? Mm. Those are rookie numbers. I would <laughs> get to pump those numbers up. Uh, but Yeah, that was a great one. This is the end is uh, definitely one if you haven't seen. I feel weird about like telling people to watch that movie. but Watch it! <laughs> I don't feel weird about it. So. I'm just saying, like that is a great movie. It is really funny. It was better than I thought it'd be, and I thought it'd be funny. I was excited when yeah. I saw Seth Rogen, John Hill, Jason Mack. They got a movie coming out. They're literally playing themselves. I'm fucking excited. <laughs> I know. I didn't even see a trailer. Dude, if you got like, so like super bad, Bill Hader, right? Let's say like they just started the crew: Bill Hader, Seth Rogen, Michael Sarah, uh, Christopher Mintz Plus, which is McLovin, yeah. Jonah Hill. Like, dude, dude I could our guy Emma last. Stone. Well, I'm just Emma Stone? I'm trying to just name as many as I can. Like, it's amazing. If you took those guys out of that movie and put in other people, there's no way it would have been as amazing as it was. That guy, whoever cast that movie, like picked like ten stars that like went on to make their own stuff. So say Emma, Emma Stone wasn't huge. No, when that movie came out. I had a crush on her. I'm a little bit of a perv. No, even when that movie came out, I was young enough. Well, plus she's 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 fine with funny guys. Like she yeah. she has great. What the. F- when she gets headbutted by the drunk Joe yeah. Hill, uh, like, so funny. It's, uh, Seth Rogen and Bill Hader as the cops. It's some of my favorite stuff right there. It's kind of how you hope that a lot of cops are, where they're just like super cool to hang out with. They act exactly how you think you would act as a cop. Like when I got this job, I thought everything would be covered in cum. <laughs> Nothing's covered in cum. <laughs> If it was covered in semen, we'd find that guy in a day, right. but, you know, he's gone, he's You watch those shows, everything just covered in semen, and the girl's real life, like, nothing. The girl's like, he's like, was she, was, was he African? Did he look darker? <laughs> he looked like you. Jewish! Okay, he was Jewish. <laughs> he was Jewish. So funny. Uh, he's been in a lot of good roles, though. Um, yeah. He turned down the role for The Hangover. I don't remember what character he was going to play, but he was, they wanted him to be in it. He did Cyrus instead. You really like that movie. I like Cyrus. Mm-hmm. I think he fucked up because you know <laughs> what? But Hangover is so good. I was gonna say if you put him in, I don't know if it's as good. It's a weird thought to think like if you replace somebody in The Hangover, is it still a watchable movie? Yeah, I don't know if he. I mean, if he did anybody, it'd be Zach Galifianakis, and I don't know if he no, could be as weird as Zach Galifianakis. We are lone wolves <laughs> running in the desert, <laughs> right? High on cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. No, I. That's funny. I did like him in Cyrus. Uh, Cyrus is a movie with uh, John C. Riley where he's Marissa Tomei's son, and she's starting to date again. She dates John C. Riley, and he puts John C. Riley through the ringer for dating his mom. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up because.
because that was one of those movies where he first started doing more serious like roles. And everybody saw him as super bad, you know what I mean? Like it's hard I still see him as super bad. Like it's hard to get rid of your iconic roles. Well, exactly, but it's hard to, it's even harder to branch out to start. So Absolutely. he's doing good at it. So. Oh, and I was gonna say, so he reading all these different scripts, right? Yeah. And he got one from Martin Scorsese for Wolf on Wall Street. And he read the role for Donnie. And Martin Scorsese is the reason he got an acting. He loves the movie Goodfellas. Yeah. Who doesn't? It's a great movie. If you don't, I wouldn't say anything bad because we don't have a lot of listeners. <laughs> but when we do, I'll have words for you. Yeah! <laughs> you know what? All five of you can unsubscribe. Not now, though, please. Yeah, please. Out. Let's boost those numbers. Yeah, get to six. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, he loved Goodfellas. So when a, a Scorsese script... I mean, to be honest, I don't think there's an actor alive that would want to work, that would not want to work with Scorsese. I would want to work with Scorsese. He's like, hey, you're a prostitute that gets fucked a lot, and you don't talk, and you don't show your face. And I was like... You can tell me I'm getting raped in real life. I was like, <laughs> please! <laughs> He's like, yeah, nice try. There's 80 people trying to I'm doing this for free. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have heard that before. Those yeah, things. so he... Uh, so he got to, he read the lines, he like, he said there's a couple roles he's had, one was, uh, Seth in Superbad, and the other one was this one at that time, where he's like, I have to have this role, this is me, I know it, I understand it, it's a low class guy that desperately wants to be accepted as a <laughs> rich really guy, well, with the veneers yeah. in his mouth, and, uh, he talked to Leo, they saw him at an Oscars party, my favorite story, he sees, uh, Mark Scorsese at an Oscars party, and he's starstruck. I always like him when <laughs> stars are starstruck. Right? And he goes up to him. Scorsese goes like, hey, how you doing? And he goes, good fellas, so good. And Scorsese goes, oh, thanks. And he goes, yeah. And turns around and walks away. And he said, like, for two weeks I wanted to kill myself. For two weeks I wanted to kill myself. At least he said something. I don't know if I'd be able to say that. But, ah, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I pooped. <laughs> You watch the mortars! <laughs> He's like, oh, you're a waiter? Like, fuck! I'd like grab the tray from the waiter. I was like, here you go, Scorsese! So he, then like a month later, he got the script for Wolf of Wall Street, fell in love with the part of Donnie, and like was like, okay, I need to get this part. Talked to DiCaprio, I guess they're both in Mexico. And, uh. Yeah, makes sense. He said, I, I went to Great Wall Street, and I talked his ear off for an hour and a half about how his character is and all the backstory to him all sort of stuff and uh, he talked to uh, Scorsese because there was 80 people in line to get this part he said and he was like number 78 because <laughs> he had no big parts you know he, he just super bad and that's not a Martin super Scorsese bad type or film forgetting Sarah Marshall this was even Which before getting really, the Greek maybe accepted. <laughs> accepted. <laughs> accepted which we'll bring up later <laughs> accepted but he went to go see Scorsese, and same thing, talked to him for an hour and a half, and he's just like, oh, that's so good. And then he did this to DiCaprio. DiCaprio, uh, he said in a scene he was doing DiCaprio, where DiCaprio had to hit him, he's so method, DiCaprio really slapped him in the face. Absolutely. And, you know, 44 takes later, he's like pissed off, but he couldn't do anything to DiCaprio. He's like, DiCaprio whoop my ass. So, so I had to outthink him. So there's a line in a movie where we're at a sushi place. And he goes, hey, that last yellow towel, go ahead. So I flipped it, and I go like, you know what? You deserve it. You deserve the yellow towel. And they like that role. So he ate it. He ate a piece of sushi. 85 takes later, DiCaprio's throwing up in a dumpster. He does not eat animals. He doesn't eat animals. And, dude, if you ate, I don't know, 50 pieces of sushi? Yeah. So he's on the ground <laughs> laughing. Everyone else is really concerned. <laughs> DiCaprio, are you okay? Is everything okay? I'm so sorry. Is everything all right? So he's on the ground laughing, and he hears someone else laugh. He looks back, and he sees it's Martin Scorsese. <laughs> so they're both laughing that DiCaprio's like, that's great. That's food poisoning, and then they become buddies. So like they're they're in it the rest of the way. That's great. I do like that. That's funny. He's like, I couldn't beat him physically. I had to try to beat him mentally by food poisoning. It was crazy. I assume Leonardo is a god, but I mean, we don't need to talk about him anymore. Well, we can a little bit. How about when he uh, caught Jonah Hill on the side of the road, and Jonah Hill's walking with his phone? And DiCaprio runs up to him and goes, Oh my god, you fucking Jonah Hill! Have you seen oh, that? Oh, I have seen that. Yeah, and Jonah Hill was like, Oh, I'm gonna get stabbed right now. <laughs> and he gets really scared. And he's like, Oh, it's Leo, hey man! And they become buddies. He acted like a crazed fan. Yeah. I yeah. have seen that. That yeah. was funny. <laughs> Maybe like uh, Leo 
even more, mm -hmm. which I didn't know was possible. He's a great guy. Uh, we brought up Accepted. Accepted. I think that was his first movie, maybe. I think that was like his first big movie. I don't know. If Justin it was his first Long movie. and yeah. Play like the supporting character. Well, he played the comic relief, which is just yeah. the role he, he folded into. Yeah, which I don't. I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, I think he went from that to, or from uh, Forty Old Virgin. I think, and then Superbad. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how it went. So I mean, it worked out for him. I mean, him and Justin Long were actually friends too. They uh, they roommated together. They were roommates. Before the movie. I think during. Wow. Or no, it was before. They did like a little TV show. I can't remember the name. You know, of the that's TV probably show. how it started. That's probably yeah. how I jumped into it. Yeah. So they, ah, that was cool. The movie's not like great or anything. Tony was pretty funny in it. But. Well, I was gonna say like those kinds of movies. If you see him and then you see like somebody from before they were famous, like they really got their thing. He is funny in it. He has good lines he, in it. He absolutely Justin is Long funny is funny in it. in it. It's not a bad movie. What happened to Justin Long? He married Drew Barrymore and they just. Whoa. He did Tusk. Drew Mary has a rap song named after her. Have you seen Tusk? No. Oh man, no. I could do a whole movie about Tusk. A whole movie about Tusk? Or not a movie. They about already home. did. <laughs> they beat you. Oh. Dude. If you guys haven't seen Tusk, I highly do not recommend it. But also, you should watch it. Yeah. It's like The Human Centipede. You should watch it once so you have it in your Oh, the, I did watch The Human Centipede. After everybody warned me about it, I was like, I gotta <laughs> fucking watch it. It's kind of like that thing on the internet. The guy's like, oh, this is gross. You want to see it? You're like, kind of. Yeah, you want to see everything what else. <laughs> what is this? Ah, why don't you watch this? Babe, come here. That's we got something to show you. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know if I've ever even heard of that movie. Yo, Kevin Smith directed it. Ooh, I like Kevin Smith. He's a big nerd. I like his comic book. Well, well, man, well you watch this and you let me know how you did. I was going to say, maybe, maybe apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit of his voiceovers. Jonah Hill is oh. voiceovers. Well, we've talked about Megamind, and that's my overrated. Megamind, which I, I don't blame you for. It just didn't... Uh, was that DreamWorks, I think, that did it? I think so. I mean, they've done good. Shrek? I was going to say, I think they've kind of ridden on the coattails of Shrek 15... You know what I mean? Like they did four. Ooh, maybe they done five. You want to do another bet? You keep. Losing? I'm absolutely one hundred percent sure. So speaking of bets, <laughs> Brandon lost our last bet, and we're gonna do another video. Of Brandon having to eat this food that I found at an ethnic store on the way over here today. I love ethnic food because I don't see ethnicity. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it wow. after this episode, but I brought it today. Absolutely, it's delicious. I mean, just subscribe on YouTube. You'll be updated on what shit I have to eat. That's I right. It'll luck. be on YouTube. I'm having bad luck right now. <laughs> bad luck. I'll let you pick the next bet, buddy. Uh, yeah, this is... Oh, I don't have anything. Let's talk <laughs> about some of the voiceovers he's done. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon. You know, I really... I mean, everybody loved the first one. I don't know about Absolutely. the second one. I love the second one, too. Absolutely. It's one of those rare instances. Shrek 2, same thing to me. It just was just as good as the original. I, like I really like it. Ice too. I know, I heard that in the last one. Mm -hmm. You can hear our drinks pouring. I'm not going to lie. Alcohol pouring really gets me going. Just saying. To the liquor store to buy more alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm with you on that. I How to Train Your Dragon for me was more of like a uh, like a nowadays Lilo and Stitch kind of feel to me. I really I liked absolutely it. get that. That's a good reference. You know, I really like you. Kudos to you. Oh, come on. Jeez. Like, subscribe. Uh, <laughs> like, subscribe. Uh, but I really did like it. I, and then the second one, which if you haven't seen it, is not a bad movie, I don't think, but it's definitely a spin. Like, they, they like, really shot for something different. I think it. I know where you're going. Do you? Sasha's Party? Oh, what? What? You're not going to Sasha's Party? How was it? Oh, you just went the second one? The I second was talking about How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, I thought you were going, like, new. So, yeah, it was good, How to Train Your Dragon. That's how we talk. Sausage Party? Uh, that is a crazy one. It's great. Not great, but crazy. That's why I thought you were talking about it. Like, they no. went a completely different direction of an animated movie. No, no, no. I was talking about How to Train Your Dragon 2, but... Sausage... It was really good. So, How to Train Your Dragon 2, a little different direction. Sausage Party? Fucking shoot for the rafters, crazy. Dave wasn't that great, to be honest. Oh, dude. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you agree or disagree if it was good or bad. I've seen it twice, so it's, it's better than most. Twice, huh? I saw so it, it once. Theaters, and I thought about watching it again. I was like, nah. Did they have meatloaf singing in it and meatloaf's the name of a food? I'm like, I figured that out in the middle of the theater, and I was laughing like a stupid idiot. I think I might have laughed at that, too. Da, da, stupid da, jokes, da, get us. Da, da, da. Dude, it was... But it's also super adult for an animated Absolutely. movie about I mean, it's, food. It's Seth Rogen. 
orgy this orgy scenes. Which bath salts. I don't know how many times <laughs> masturbated to, but the falafel. Me, it was a lot. <laughs> the falafel. <laughs> like I, th- I thought it'd be. Sam Hyatt right. plays like. I don't know, she plays a taco, probably. I think she plays a taco. No, she absolutely does. That or a chimichanga. <laughs> well, taco probably is a girl. It's taco. So funny. Taco, please. But, uh, yeah, Sausage Party was crazy. But back to back to a better movie. Okay. Had a Trainer Dragon 2. Okay. Okay. What were you saying before I rudely No, no, you're show? fine. I was saying, and I don't want <laughs> to blow it apart, but there's a scene where the dad dies and the mom lives. Yeah. And the dragon kills it. They follow the Disney thing. Oh, man. <laughs> And I was, like, super bummed. And I watched that movie with my mom. And she immediately was like, why are you sad the dad died and the mom lived? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, the dad's been there his whole life. Right? The mom goes like this, like, deuces and, like, flies off to go do whatever she wants. And then shows up later and then he dies and now she's a new mom. I was like, that bumps me out. But my mom was just, like, super identifying with the mom. Like, she just want the moms to die. And I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's funny. I did not watch that movie with my mom, thank God, apparently. I, it wasn't bad, and they're making a sequel to it, too. They're making How to Train Your Dragon 3, which actually looks What's good. It, well, the first one, the second one, we're good, so... I guess that's what DreamWorks does, though. If they have, like, a good movie, let them, let, let, like, throw shit at the wall whatever sticks. They're like, hey, that would turn out to be Kung cool. Fu Panda, first one was gold. Wow, second yeah. one, not as goldy, and then I never saw the third one. I'd have to... Watching. I'd have to see... I mean, they were all had funny jokes and all this different stuff, but, I mean... You don't need to see them. I mean, my the third one's been in my Netflix queue for whenever it released on the Netflix. Uh, yeah, it does it, it. That's the only problem I have with some movies is when you recommend a movie to somebody, they're like, "How? What do you think about Kung Fu Panda three? You're like, "I've got ten other movies you should watch instead." Absolutely. I've got Maniac on Netflix that has Jonah Hill and Emma Stone in it that I would recommend before that, and that is a weird movie, and it's a. It's kind of like a long series with episodes like 40 minutes long, but it's like a show, a show movie, I guess, but it's weird. He plays a character that has like a psychosis, is taking these pills, and he has these delusions. Emma Stone's like trying to get into this drug study just to have drugs. She just wants to <laughs> And it, I, I, it's one of those things that's like hard to recommend because you don't know what people's like mindset on it. It's so yeah. fucking weird. It reminds me of like a beautiful, or a eternal sunshine of the... Something with Jim Carrey. With Jim Carrey, yeah. Etern- Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah. Like that. It reminds me of one of those where you're like, do you want to recommend this? And you're like, you know what? Yeah, I do. Watch it and then tell me if I wasted your time because I thought it was good, but I, I, it's so fucking weird. I, I really get into characters and I like a lot of character development. Some people are like, dude, I was on my phone. I don't even know why. Wh- yeah. Why does he have a mullet now? Why is he living in a trailer park? I'm like, well, if you weren't, you can't be on your phone when you watch this. Yeah. It's like Game of Thrones, dude. If you miss an episode, it's not Friends. I'm behind on Game of Thrones. You need to catch up. What? Well, sorry. We don't all mooch off everybody else. <laughs> I mooch as much as I can. Thanks, Jim. You're, you're doing it smart. Father of mine. Thanks, me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, Maniac, I'm not all the way through it. I don't know if you are. Mm-mm. So we won't spoil anything for you. No, but I, this is one that I would... I recommend it, too. Okay. Um... I mean, it's the reason I picked Jonah Hill. I saw that, and he had, I think it's called in the '90s, a new movie coming out. Oh, I'm, which I'm, I was born in the '90s. Love the '90s. Sure. It's the greatest generation. Think so? I was born in that generation. I like the 1920s, where people had to make their own wooden wheels. That's dumb. Oh, right. Wooden wheels? I have rubber wheels now. Rubber they wheels. Last longer. <laughs> <laughs> I have rubber wheels. Fuck you, I have toys. wheels that will inflate themselves for like 30 miles. That's amazing. And what happens when your wooden wheel cracks, huh? Well, then I just go shit in my wooden toilet outside by where the bears are. I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got his new movie coming out. I think it's called In the 90s. I'm not 100% sure on the title. I saw a trailer for it the day before I was supposed to... The day before we did our last podcast, mm. Christopher Walken. Right then, is like... He just had Maniac release, which I was excited for, and that which I'm actually pretty excited for. Yeah. He directs it. He directs oh, that's that really? movie. Oh, awesome. Cool. So. You know, you should know the name of it, though. Before I'm pretty sure it. it's in the 90s. Okay. I just, I'm not, I don't want to, I doubt myself very easily. Sure. You should. You're always wrong. I'm, How many right now, watch? absolutely. I'm very wrong. <laughs> so wrong. No, you're fine. I haven't seen. 
seen it yet, but... Uh, I haven't seen it yet. It's not out quite yet. I know it comes out in like a few weeks. But... I don't... So I like it when someone has a background in writing and directing. Like Jonah Hill, like I said, he started by writing and directing his own stuff that got people's attention. If they're like, hey, here's Brad Pitt. He wrote and directed this. In my mind, I'm thinking, you are famous for being... A very handsome guy. Yeah, he's famous for Thelma Louise, where he just stands there. Yeah, well, also, if you can name a role, if you can name a role where Please. he wasn't the coolest guy in the room the whole movie, let me know, because that is what he's famous for. What? Curious Case of Benjamin Button. He's not the coolest guy. He's the coolest baby in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Really, though, if you can think of a role, you find us on Whiskey Cinema. On every damn social media platform. Dude, my, dude I, uh, sister Barbara told me that one time. I, I love, I love Brad Pitt, Fight Club, Troy, and she Great goes, movie. Troy, not so much. She's like, yeah, he, and it's a woman saying this, right? Yeah. So they're like, there's every part of a guy that can acknowledge how good looking a dude is. Brad Pitt's handsome. I'm and like, she was just like, oh, he's the coolest guy all the time. He never plays someone that's not cool. He never plays a different. And I was like, well, he, <laughs> well, he can play a loser, but he's just like, it's Brad Pitt. I also don't like that when you have like a Channing Tatum. He's like, I can't any girls, and I'm like, dude. I mean, it's not like Will Ferrell and the other guys who's slaying. (laughs) (laughs) He's got Marky Mark over there not getting a girl. Marky Mark. And his wife's Ava Longoria, or no, it's Ava Mendes. Ava Mendes. No, you're right. Yeah, Ava Ava Mendes. She's really hot. The entire movie. You with him? He's like, I know, I settled. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I mean, we can't all be Will Ferrell, but. We yeah. can settle to be Brad Pitt. Channing Tatum. We can all settle. Uh, speaking of Brad Pitt, he's actually friends with Jonah Hill. Oh, is he? Uh, in the filming of 21 Jump Street, Jonah Hill crashed at his house for four months. Really? Yeah. Why wow, he filmed that movie, just out of convenience. I assume that Brad Pitt kicked him out. <laughs> four months is a long time. Four months is a long time. But maybe Brad Pitt's filming his own goddamn movie. Or not even there. He probably owns a few houses. I was gonna say like I, uh, John Lim's the composer. Yeah. Okay. So this is super. I'm gonna act like I know. Star Wars. I know. Jaws. I'm Spielberg. <laughs> so uh, there's a guy who's like, oh, I was looking for you. Uh, I was back in California. And he's like, yeah, I was in front of taking care of someone's house. He's like, he's some guy named William. And I was like, okay, I don't know. He's like, anyways, he's off touring the country all the time. Just he's want to take care of his house. And I was like, William, what? He's like, no, his last name's William. And I was like, okay. I don't know. And he's like, <laughs> he does music. His name's like William John or something. I go, John Williams? The most famous composer is? He goes, John Williams, that's it. And I was like, are you shitting me? And he's like, what's he, why, what's he do? And I was just like, dude, get out of here. Then Spiel something. Berg Spiel or Steve Spiel. I don't know his <laughs> name. Steve Spiel. Then Berg Spiel. I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. But that was the same kind of thing. He, those guys, they're super famous and super working. They're yeah. never near at these beautiful homes they buy, so they need someone to like live there and take care of them. Yeah, I believe that. Or Jonah Hill. All right, I was gonna say, or Jonah Hill. <laughs> hey, you filming the movie? I need someone to feed my goldfish and my sharks and my. <laughs> oh, maybe the sitter was like a real life documentary of him taking care of his nine <laughs> kids. Dude, I believe. Oh, that's brutal. I don't know if it's filming a movie is worth taking care of nine kids. Nine. Unless you get to see Angelina Jolie all the time. She seems pretty crazy. Well, if I'm looking at her from a distance, which I do. Yeah, if you see her up close, she'll probably stab you. She probably, I mean, I believe she'd kick my ass. I've seen two murder in her days. How about Wanted? Oh, God, I love that movie. Yeah? Love it. That's a good one. Love it. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, I'll try to think more, uh, Jonah Hill. Well, we haven't brought it up. We brought it up before on this podcast. Okay. The Django? Oh, Django! The only person to make KKK funny. <laughs> I'll say it. I laughed uncomfortably. Okay. But I couldn't hold in that laugh. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen Django Unchained. You need to. You need to. And I think I brought this up with DiCaprio. Yeah, we brought this up already. We'll bring it up more. And I feel it because it is close to Halloween. Anytime I see a monster movie for Halloween and they do is wearing a mask. Because, <laughs> you know, if you wear a costume and you turn, your eyes are like, you're like, you can't turn too sharp. No, you can't. That mask ain't falling on your head completely. No. You can run downstairs when you get out of here. So, so uh, in the scene, they're all in KKK. They're after Django 
because Django just embarrassed the main white land yeah. owner guy who is played by Don Johnson. Yes. And uh, they have their masks on. And from a distance, it's really scary. I think a lot of horror movies, like, you don't want dialogue. You just want to see in the distance. But they get closer because Tarantino's so good. And the guy's sitting there and he's like, I can't see out of this thing. I can't see my eyes. I love the end of that scene where the guy's like, don't ask me or mine for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I will always say that scene still. Yeah. That little line. I love it. But they argue about the eye holes yes. not matching up. I love it when Tony like, this eye hole's small, I can't see out of it. And he like, tries to pull it and he rips you like, he takes the mask off and shows this Jonah Hill. He's like, I ripped my mask. <laughs> Did anybody bring any extra mask? And the guy goes, no, we didn't bring any extra mask. He's like, I was just asking. They all take a vote on whether or not to <laughs> wear the mask. He's like, the main guy, Don, he's like, well, I'll decide whether or not we'll wear the masks. And I thank you and all what your wife has done, but we're going no masks. <laughs> yeah. They're right to the hill. Because it's so honest. I think that's why. I mean, you believe it. It's like, all right, I can see them having problems with their masks. Well, that's funny. And then also for Jonah Hill to take like a, such a small part, but it's such a funny part. The writing in it, you can see it's very much like Pulp Fiction. Well, yeah. Where, like, someone's, like, cleaning up, like, a murder crime. Or washing their hands in the sink with blood on their hands. He's like, hey, how come the towel's all red, man? You wash your hands with soap and water, and then you dry with the towel. You don't clean your hands with the towel. I'm like, that's such great writing. That is Tarantino's top three directors for me. He's one that I will hope that, uh, I hope he uses Jonah Hill more, because that's kind of what he does. When he likes an actor, he uses him a bunch more. <laughs> Everybody really does that. Mm-hmm. Scorsese, Leonardo, maybe Absolutely. even Jonah Hill. I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. Because he's obviously he's hoping to. He won or got nominated. You ready? It's, yeah, I'm always ready for whatever you throw. All right, I'm throwing this out there. Secret role that Jonah Hill will be really good at. Secret role. You got one off the top of your head. I you need, seem pretty excited. I'll go first. All right, you go first. So I've been thinking about it a lot for Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill is like our last guy, Christopher Walken, where. Funny, comedic, but also does really good serious roles. So it's kind of the opposite. I Where think. he's more comedic and then go serious? Yeah, and I think he went walking with serious and then went comedic. And you weren't expecting, but it worked. You know, I think that's hard for... Uh, right, because Jonah Hill started... He was probably like 22 and he played like a high schooler. Yeah. But I think that a role that I would like Jonah Hill to go into is... I love him as comedic roles, but I want to see him do more serious stuff. I want him to go to a point of where... I want to see him as like a Pesci. I want to see him in like a gangster role. I could see him doing some. Dude, I want. You think to see I'm a clown, huh? Yeah, I want to see him. I could see that. I want to see him as even though he's not a huge guy, I want to see him as like the crazy guy in a mafia gang. Like, dude, that would make me so happy to see him try to fill that role. <laughs> I think it'd be so great. That's what I want to see, Jonah. If you're listening, dude, jump on. Your friends with Scorsese. I don't know. I don't know. Make Goodfellas five. That's a Goodfellas five. I hope so. <laughs> I've missed a couple. I, was, I haven't seen the first or the other three. I would like to see that though, or even just some kind of gangster movie. Uh, for me, is something that I'd like to see him do, especially since that got him into movies in the first place. He loved Goodfellas. He I would, did. and he's already hooked up with the guy that directed Goodfellas. It's crazy. He jump into it. That'd be so great. Are you ready for mine? Sure. Batman. I think he'd be a great Batman. <laughs> Uh, I, I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought he'd be a pretty good penguin, to be honest. A penguin? A penguin. Like a villain? A villain. Who do you want directing it? You want a Nolan or do you want a Burton? Or do you want Not a... Not Burton. I like Burton's Batmans. Okay. Uh, I did. I would still give him Nolan. Nolan, I think, could... Okay. I mean... So if there was a penguin cast, you wanted as Jonah Hill? I could give Jonah Hill that movie. Okay. And see him a more of a sadistic guy. That is kind of the role that I'm feeling too. I want a more of like a murderous serious. Yeah, like because I mean Penguin will joke a little. Yeah. Kind of like Pesci. God. You think I'm a clown, huh? You know him with the bald head. He would look like Penguin. I think he's got kind of big. Ears, I did though. go short and fat. I obviously <laughs> typecast it there. Well, he could. I mean, that his weight fluctuates so much for his movies. It he does. can absolutely do it. Just like Christian Bale. Oh, Machinist. Yeah. Oh. And God. maybe others. Oh. uh... Your one that came out with 
American Hustle. Yes. He, Gain weight. Gain weight. He did weight. the comb over where he starts painting his, or gluing his hair down. <laughs> I assume you know what that is where you went bald. The comb over. I would do it now, but I don't have enough hair. <laughs> <laughs> I but, tried it with my eyebrows. <laughs> I, that was mine. That was mine. I thought that he would be a good penguin. That's not bad. I, 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 but we're kind of on the same path. Like yeah. I would like to see more of his. Uh, I believe your Pesci role a little bit more than my Penguin. Role. Well, I'll say Lord of War too, where he was in with. Uh, yeah. Uh, who was it? I can't remember his name. Not he Cooper? played Fantastic Four. Oh, oh, oh! And then he was there with somebody else. There's another big actor in that, but he did more of a serious role with that, and I was really like, kind of hoping it wasn't a great movie, but I thought he did a good job. And I'm hoping that he kind of keeps going down that route. And don't get me wrong, like I like Jim Carrey in the movie The Number 23. Not a bad role. Also, stick to comedy. Clearly you have a fucking gift. I think we've talked about this right on the podcast. Jim Carrey kills it. No Dude, I'm movie. just he just has saying. To, has to be in the right role. Because, I mean, uh, The Truman Show? Oh. Not yeah. comedy. How about one he did recently, Yes Man? Which was more of a... I actually like that movie. Me too. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I was a little no, nervous no. doing a bad That was more like, oh, of him going movie. back to comedy, and I, I, I would love it if Absolutely. he, if uh, Jonah Hill did my man, or did did <laughs> did my man. I, That's me, <laughs> Jonah Hill. If you're listening, <laughs> jump in. <laughs> I wish my man Jonah Hill would do like what John C. Riley does or used to do, which is he would do. Serious roles. He would do Gangs of New York. And he would jump right back into Step Brothers. And he would do another serious role. And then he would do another comedy. Outside like, of Gangs of New York, what serious role has he done good? He's done a couple. I asked, what? I didn't say, ooh, he's done oh, more than one? Oh, Tell Day Nights. Oh, God, that should have won the Oscar. So You're serious? Right. No, I don't know. I'm trying to think off the top of my head for John C. Reilly. Man, I'm sure there's a bunch, but I can't. I can't think of a bunch. But he, I know he did. Uh, but he did. I swear. I mean, he he's jumped back and forth because he wasn't known as a comedic actor for a while, and he did Step Brothers, and it just blew up. Like that. Well, killed. Step Brothers is amazing. Can't wait till we talk Will Ferrell, and I can just talk that movie for an hour. Uh, speaking Probably of Will Ferrell. Speaking of which, can I can I do our uh, disclosure for our next one? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Can you pour us two more shots, and I will build up? What do you? I don't know if you guys noticed. Which, if you follow us on Instagram, you have on Twitter. We've revamped everything. Oh yeah, man. we've hey, moved studios. Yeah, because hey, we're our growing. New studio. We got alcohol. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed the name of it. Yeah. The whiskey cinema. Which doesn't mean we're just drinking whiskey. We're drinking. It's really an excuse for us to get drunk. <laughs> and an excuse for you to get drunk at home. Play I mean, the yeah. at home version of this game. Maybe we'll start a drinking game one day. You shoot every time we shoot. Oh, you want to say, you know what? We're thinking about doing a live episode for maybe close to Halloween, talking about our favorite Halloween movies and movies that have to do with, like, that. Here's my teaser. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> you haven't seen it. SNL does... David uh, Tom S. Hanks, Pumpkins. David S. Pumpkins. I love that skit. Yeah. Makes me laugh me and him, it's a dumb skit, but me and him have always loved it. Yeah. Pour another shot, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna get us going with uh with our, our blitz. So the one I'm going for, I'm gonna keep it going. We've we've had some great names. We've done uh DiCaprio, we've done Walken, we've done Jonah Hill. And uh for our next one, what I'm gonna do is somebody that I think is relevant. I've really liked it's been around for a long time. He has a, such a strong history. I thought you were gonna say job on. <laughs> Jabo. Strong Jabo? Strong Jabo. <laughs> yeah, who made you? Patrick Warburton? <laughs> Ooh, that's the strongest. Jay Leno? Uh, I'm gonna do Robert Downey Jr. Ooh, Iron... Ooh, fuck yeah! You feel it? Iron Man! Avengers! I'm gonna do RDJ, guys. Captain America? Yeah. And his other movies, whatever else he's in. <laughs> I don't think there is any. I'm sure there's Just in the last five years. I think they just plucked him off the street like, hey, guy with the coke addict. I'll do that. Guy with the coke problem. You I, get I on here. I love here. RDJ. I'm a big fan. I, I do like him. He's and a great sense movies. of humor. Dude, him him talking with his kid at a Comic Con and the, someone asked his kid like, hey, what's it like being RDJ's um, son? He said, he, he's like, oh, it's just normal. And Robert Engineer's like, <laughs> tell him the truth. Your dad's Iron Man. <laughs> right? He is Iron Man in life. That's right. Which is... So tune amazing. in next week. We're going to be doing uh, Robert Downey Jr. We'll be killing it. We're also going to have Brian uh, eating something gross here on YouTube soon. Yeah, so go to YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button. Come on. Come on. You know you want to. We're thumbs up worthy-ish. Oh, it's the greatest story I've ever heard. Do you have time? Can you tell the story again? 
Uh, hit that, hit subscribe. You'll be just updated on whenever we release a video. Yeah. Which we're getting, we're getting the hang of this. So there'll probably be more. And then follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Who knows? Maybe I'll start a Pinterest. I love the <laughs> fact that he acknowledges you like, just as getting drunk, we're like, you're absolutely right. And put, please, we will make a drinking game so you guys can drink with us. Do we absolutely can? You guys tell us if you want a drinking game, we'll do it. Also, let us know if there's another act you guys want us to talk about when we show up next time. Absolutely. All, All right, right guys. guys. We'll see you next week. Whiskey Cinema. Peace! By the way, the reason that we're here is my co host, Brandon Rich, is tremendously lousy at winning bets. That is true. Tell them why you're terrible. Uh, if you guys listened, on a Christopher Walken episode, we made Fine. a little oh. bet four and a half are under on the prophecy. The prophecy. I chose the under. I had no idea. I no. was up for a bet. Dude, I didn't know either. I feel like I got hustled personally. But hey, it won fair and square. Well, anytime there's like a great movie, people are, are idiots, right? They so, made two in one year. <laughs> that's not a good movie. Well, hey, let's make another one right now. That's oh, a, God, yes. That is crazy. I can't think of another time they're like, you know what? Let's make Terminator 4 and Ter Terminator 5 in the same year. To be fair, I still would have lost a bet if they didn't make that one in that same year. Well, they, they made five, six. so I won the bet. So our yeah. bet that we do on Whiskey Cinema, if you lose, you have to eat something gross. And unveiling that is sh I don't know if you guys can see it. He I hasn't can't. seen it yet. This is the unveiling and seeing what it is. What is it called? Yeah, what is that called? Raj Bog? <laughs> What the hell is that? Is, I'll read the can. I'll read it the is can. called Raj Bog. He did not read that wrong. Boom. I read Indian. Good. Soft cottage cheese dumplings and rose, <laughs> saffron, pistachio, and cardamom flavor sugar. This actually sounds pretty good. I bet it's delicious. Dude, I'm not even going to. Dude, who wouldn't want cottage cheese dumplings? I'll Dude. easily win the. Raj Bog. Look I'll, at that. I'll Raj easily Bog. lose every bet. Dude, that's what you're giving me. No, that's fine. Yes. It is a dessert. I asked the guy who barely spoke English. I said, I want a very potent canned food. And he's like, desserts are over here. And I was right. like, let's do it. Luckily for me, I deliver to an Indian restaurant for my job. They give me free Indian food all the time. And I'm always prepared to eat. <laughs> <laughs> always. Well, go for it yourself. Let's enjoy some Rajbog. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we, let's listen to that good sound right here. Oh, you know. I feel like I'm about to eat pears. No, pears would be way better than no, Raj Bog. This is a pretty big can. Do I have to eat this whole can? Yeah. Well, I'm going to make you eat a good amount. That's All right. Raj I can Bog. eat a good amount. It also looks like testicles. My favorite. <laughs> Go ahead. Just, just dig on it. Do this. There's Raj Bog. It's harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> For a cottage cheese. Oh, we had to eat half. It's kind of like a pear in its juice. <laughs> no, it is. It's dripped in a syrup. Overall, I feel like I've eaten worse. <laughs> okay, that's great. But this isn't great. <laughs> it's a little chewy. I was going to say, you've only eaten half of one, and I think you'll eat two. two I, I will make you eat three. But I think, too, you have to finish Raj Bog. You can find it at uh, any Indian store where they don't care about your well-being. Well, they definitely didn't hear. Oh, you might have gotten expired, Raj <laughs> Bog. You can definitely taste the sugar and everything. This is a big bite. I'm getting rid of it. The good thing about Raj Bog is the difference between an expired one and a normal one is the same. It's exactly the same. There's no change. Oh. <laughs> If you lose a bet on Whiskey Cinema, it is serious problems. Oh, is that it? How are you feeling? I got one more. No, but how are you feeling? How's it? How's it? Oh, 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 Dude, it's it's a cottage cheese dumpling. Mm. Is it good? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked for a while to find a good punishment. <laughs> So oh. <laughs> you know what's funny is that people pay to eat it? Like I did, so you can eat it. I didn't pay to eat this, but yes, I you did. Don't. I don't know. Uh -huh. I know you're thinking you're like, man, oh. that was terrible. Don't worry. 
What's this? Alcohol? He's got one more. You drink more. Oh. <laughs> oh, that does not make it better. Flaming Dog Pepper? Don't worry. They're oh. only the size of your fist. They are fucking huge. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're anything that you went to, kudos. Oh, dude, I'm so glad I didn't lose. I'm so glad I didn't oh, lose. Oh, man. If you also have, like, good ideas for, like, punishment foods that we should eat, do message us, comment, because we're going to do a lot of bets on our podcast. Speaking Sadly, of Sadly, we are. Eat another uh, dog ball there. Mm. So sweet, really. It's, it's so big. Hey, you care how big that thing is. Like, it's no joke. Dude, That's it's... like a golf ball. <laughs> this and is the it's... perfect dimension. I don't know what's worse, the taste or how fucking much it makes my teeth hurt because it's so sweet. <laughs> Dude, oh. uh, I guarantee you a golf ball would taste better. Dude, I'd rather suck on a man's golf ball. <laughs> Fuck this shit. I just went to an Indian store and was like, what's nasty? No, what? Everything we have. Dude, I'm just telling you. And if you lose next time a whiskey cinema, dude, it's going to be worse than dog balls. Dog balls, huh? I'd rather eat dog balls. Yeah? What? I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh. I don't want you to call it wrong thing. Dog balls is an Alaskan delicacy. A Raj Bog. Raj Bog. Raj Bog. And if you're Indian, we're insulting you. It's because your food's bad. Except I actually had some good curry the other day. That is true. What's the name of it? Karma? Karma's really good in Park City. I had like a full bite. I almost threw up. Do I have? Oh. Oh, that's perfect. Ah. All right. Warning in the future. You guys Woo! can't handle a man throwing oh, down. Drink. If you can't handle a man throwing down because he <laughs> is eating dog balls, uh, just go ahead and just switch on over to like a beautiful picture of a cat or something on your Facebook. Or like a cow doing like, something really sweet. He might throw up eating Raj Bog. I might. And you, I don't mean to offend you. You Indians are crazy. Yeah, you Indians are great. And we're sorry we took your land. <laughs> Oh, Eat that in honor of all the Native Americans. That we still Cheers, Gavna. Oh, 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 a strong choice. That's a strong choice. Oh, man. Man, oh, yeah. Ready? Live. Live moment. Look at him. Feel it. You got it. You, you can kill it. I got you. I have faith in you. My co host. Whiskey cinema, you got this. Also, feel the texture of that really gross ingredients we have in there. It's all cans. <laughs> in case you guys don't know the ingredients, Raj Bog is soft cottage cheese dumplings. Okay. In rose, saffron, pistachio, and cardamom flavored sugar syrup. You lose a bet on whiskey cinema, shit gets real. Oh. What happened? I almost threw up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did you get it? My man right here. My fucking man right here. Are you alright? That's so good. That was delicious. Well, how good was it? So, okay. Have you ever eaten a dog's asshole? It's not nearly as good as that. I was gonna say, <laughs> you know what? Hey, don't bother yourself. We got another one. <sighs> Dude, even as I poked that, I am not eating another one. Dude, the texture of that was gross. It felt like I, you hit a cake, you hit a, you hit oh. a cake, and then there's like an almond in it. Dude, that's <laughs> juicy. It's surprisingly, you know juicy. what? In honor of whiskey cinema, <laughs> and because I am a trooper, I will end the podcast right now. <laughs> I'm not eating that shit. I don't blame you. That's disgusting. You gotta beat me in a bet, sucker. All right, guys. We're gonna see you next time. Watch us on uh, Whiskey Cinema and watch Brandon lose more bets. But anyways, was that really good? That's not bad. I'm not losing any more bets. That was the most disgusting thing I think I've ever eaten. Oh, man. I feel like such a win. All right, guys. Don't forget to follow us. Let's have a break. Like, subscribe. Whiskey Cinema. Win.